requires a 3D model that is input for printing, which is usually designed virtually on a software. But if we can just do a scan, why not? So 3D scanning comes in uh, where we scan the object and we generate a 3D model of it. Currently on the market is mostly professional 3D full body scanners. The prices for those will range in the thousands. As example, uh, these are some of the other 3D scanners on the market. So for our archive scan, we have tried to bring a cost-effective scanner. For an archive scan that uses 36 cameras and Raspberry Pi each, it will cost about $3,900. Um, this is compared to $70,000 for some other professional full-body 3D scanners. For our archive scan that we presented at APEC, um, we use 20 cameras and Raspberry Pi each. And for that, we only use about $700 because in school, we actually own quite a few Raspberry Pi and network features, so we just reuse some of those. So today, we want to be doing a demonstration. I'll just give you an overview. Uh, our archive scan uses photogrammetry as the method to infer that information from photos to generate a 3D model. So the cameras of archive scan actually take about only 6 seconds to take a photo. This is compared to other scanners that can take up to minutes, so you have to just sit there, sit still for a few minutes. And archive scan is a scalable project, so the quality of the scan can be improved by just adding more Raspberry Pi and cameras. So for archive scan, we use a dimension of about 1 meter radius from the center and 1 meter high, so objects can be scanned within the area. And the model that is generated is quite high resolution. So this is just uh, some of the hardware that we use. Uh, we use metal aluminum poles and wooden bases, uh, our own 3D mounts that we sound design. And yeah, these are some of the parts that we use. So now I'll be screening a time lapse for the assembly process. <coughs> So for this, we actually have to screw our uh, aluminium poles to the bases, which is what Melvin is doing, and then I'm actually attaching the respiratory ties to the poles itself. One pole will have two respiratory ties, so we'll take uh, two photos from one photo each for each respiratory pie. Uh, then we're connecting the internet cables and the power cables. Uh, this actually took about uh, half an hour for two people to set up. And at, actually at APEC, we had a lot more help, so uh, it took a relatively shorter time. And this is the final scan. We actually took a scan at the end. Okay, uh, this scanner has been featured in the last year's National Infocom Awards Singapore, which was uh, in late November last year, as well as Micron Impact, which was around last week. And uh, to end off, this is one of the final scans that we took because we couldn't load the actual 3D model, so we have a few screenshots here from the model itself. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item is by PayPal, but actually PayPal, uh, they are not here. Uh, what else ha happened is um, um, one of the engineers in PayPal uh, actually uh, wanted to uh, inform us about some outreach program. Right. So uh, in the PayPal Singapore office, um, they actually conduct quite a number of uh, outreach programs. And yeah, this is maybe our other very based tech company in Singapore. Um, so uh, one of the programs that they conducted was a Node.js training for IT college East students uh, at PayPal office. Uh, they can also do training on site. So uh, this was actually conducted uh, two weeks ago at uh, SST School of Science and Technology the uh, Hackathon Training. Uh, I was actually there also. Uh, these, these were my year two, set two students. Right. So um, the engineers actually conduct free training 
and uh, um, they take this up as an outreach program, right, to enthuse uh, or outside uh, students into uh, STEM uh, education, right. So uh, if you're interested, uh, you can contact um, that PayPal engineer. Uh, it's actually Mr. Lawrence. Uh, we'll also post this site uh, somewhere uh, or, or email that to you. Right. So that's for the second uh, fire, sorry, lightning talk. Right, so we'll quickly move on to the other one, which is uh, okay. Um, I'm not too sure whether you know Broadcom, but uh, it's actually it powers 99.8 or 99.9 percent .9 of all the connections uh, between your devices and the internet. Right, so they actually have uh, two engineers. Here, uh, okay, maybe just put your hand, Mr. Chris and Mr. Patrick. Right. So what they are going to do is uh, they are actually here to get to know uh, you and uh, somewhere in December this year they hope to do uh, Raspberry Pi Academy uh, SG, uh, SG, which is actually a free two-day workshop right, for uh, teachers to learn about Raspberry Pi and their use in education. Right. So we have actually also emailed you uh, about um, the possible dates. Right. It's likely to be in December, but uh, they need to get some idea uh, what your preferences or uh, availability uh, are. And this is done in collaboration with the Singapore Science Centre. The workshop will be free. Right. Uh, they are committing some trainers right, to to do this. Right, uh, our next, uh, we'll invite Raffles uh, to share a little about their, their company program. Students, okay, um, 
at the fourth year. Okay, so it's a subscription basis. Uh, for the students who have been working with us very closely in the collective programs, we also uh, seek out uh, attachment programs for them with companies. So they will be attached to a company for two to three weeks, okay, where uh, they, they actually put their skills that they have learned right, um, in the computer elective to good use. All right, so um, other than that, okay, I just want to highlight some of the student projects that we do, right, and maybe the outcome of some hackathons that we join, or uh, it may just be an anthem project okay, um, that they come up with. But for instance, I have this uh, two students who actually took part in Google Cloud Developer Challenge. Okay, they came up with this particular system that allows people to organize activities all right, and uh, uh, create events. Okay, and other than creating events, right, uh, typically what happens is that the event organizers sometimes have to crowd, crowd fund for uh, money to buy certain things, right? So this particular platform allows them to actually set a target goal of how much they need, all right? Maybe to pay for the rental at uh, Costa Sands, okay? And other than that, they can also uh, ask people to sponsor different items like chicken wings, um, um, hood and so forth. So it's a platform where it pulls together the planning and also the execution of the logistics. Okay, so uh, these two students actually did this as uh, part of their anthem project. Okay, then we submitted the entry to Google Cup Challenge in 2013. So they won, um, they won uh, I think they went into finals, okay, uh, and uh, they won themselves some nice gadgets. Okay, so I think um, in, uh, in school, uh, we want them to have a sense that whatever they learn in school can be put to good use the next moment. It's, it's, it, they don't have to wait till they graduate from the university, all right, to put their knowledge to good use. And, I think as teachers, um, uh, if we can encourage that that light in them, you know, to uh, seek out what they, they want to do, even like a small project like this, right? They feel a sense of accomplishment. Okay. Um, sorry, I have more projects, but um, if you are keen to find out more about the projects, right, you can talk to me. I have a few projects that I will showcase during the tea break. I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, we, I want to say a little about um, what our A-level students do. Uh, they actually offer free Python, introductory Python programming workshops uh, to schools. Uh, and so for last semester, we did a session for uh, Victoria JC. And these are the JC students. And we also did a session for Thermasic JC. Uh, these are the secondary school kids. Uh, I think one or two are from the high school set. Right. So um, if you are interested, uh, it actually uh, also gives our students an opportunity to uh, consolidate and deepen their, their understanding of, of the subject. Right. We are quite welcome to uh, invite you to visit our school. Uh, it's free, lasts about two to three hours uh, on a Saturday morning, and uh, yeah, free tea break, they are going to pay. Okay, um, yeah, so we will move on to the last one, uh, which is from BTW. Yeah. <coughs> okay, sorry, guys, I didn't know how to present today, so I have no slides, but I'm from BTW Technologies, so let me introduce to you my company. So basically, we are partners with IDA to teach code for fun to primary and secondary school students. So what we will be teaching them is about IoT, Raspberry Pi, and so on. So basically, as Singaporeans embrace technology, we are becoming more and more connected to each other with your mobile phones, your, your internet store, or whatever. So basically, one of kids to prepare to face this world in the future. So what we are doing is to actually teach these children how to make sense of technologies by teaching them, for example, cloud services in the future. In fact, my cloud professor is right at the back. He's a lecturer at SMU. So, if you're interested in teaching your children uh, more towards IoT, please look for me at BTW. Thank you.